You're listening to the Power Platform People podcast on the CRM Audio Network with the bearded CRM guy Ian Connolly and the Mark Christie. The guys will take you on a journey of the Power Platform community. Here we go. Thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe to the podcast with your favorite app and check out crm.audio for information on all the other shows on the network. So welcome along to the next edition of our podcast. Today, me and Mark are going to have a chat with some people about some lifestyle choices, really. And for me, I think it's going to be a bit of an educational piece. Uh, I'm praying yeah, about this tub- subject in general, right? And in that way, I just have what I have. I do what I do because that's just what's convenient. It's, it's a naivety in my part to some extent, I think. You've recently kind of changed this lifestyle yourself, Mark, do you think? Yes, so... Kind of, I'm like 99, well, actually after the weekend, I'm probably now, I can fully do it, but we'll get into that one later on, because I've got something to share with Eliza later on, yep. so, and I've just given away basically who's on the podcast now. Yeah, exactly, so that's 50% of who's on the podcast at the moment, well, a quarter, it's not really 50, because obviously me and you are here, Mark and Ian, of course, and uh, we've got Eliza and Alison, and if you guys want to introduce yourself, Hello. Hello, Hi. after you, Eliza. Cool. So for those of you who are listening, I am Eliza, Eliza Benitez. I am based out in Wellington in New Zealand. I am a consultant in the Dynamics 365 and Para Platform world. And all of these beautiful people on this podcast today, I've met on the Twitter sphere. And yeah, over to you, Alison. Thank you, Eliza. And my name's Alison Mulligan, and I am based in London with Maximus, and we are filthy recruiters. <clears throat> Sorry if I hate this. <laughs> um, but I am also a D365 user. And a magician who vanishes by the looks of things. Sorry, my yeah. sound just went out and came back. Um, yeah, and uh, I... Uh, I'm a D365 user and a power addict. I've been trying to build some crappy power apps in my, uh, <laughs> in my spare time. Um, they weren't very good, uh, but you know that's a story for another day. But it's uh, and uh, like Elisa said, I I think I met all of these guys through Twitter actually. So yeah, all hail Twitter. It's all community driven, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So so on that point. Uh, the topic of the today's podcast is kind of where I become a little bit of an outcast in this one as a, a carnivore, a meat eater, <laughs> one of the dirty, dirty meat eaters. Uh, and obviously everybody else here isn't. So, it's so can I just about... one, can I just correct you for one thing? Mm. One thing that you said there. You said that for once you were an outcast. <laughs> I know, I was kind of, I said it and I thought, questioned it myself to be fair. I was like, is it really the first time? I don't know if I actually, no, it's definitely not, right? Definitely not the first time an outcast, but thanks for uh, bringing that up. That's I'm right. definitely I'll not just... an outcast anymore because I'm also now an MVP. You are indeed. Well done. This is the first podcast we've done since I'm an MVP, right? So that's a little Woo-hoo! interesting one, but. Should have uh, should have done a podcast all on, on camera, recorded like a video podcast and had your MVP award in the background. So like, was... Standards are slipping in. So... But I'm humbled and honoured to be able to do that when I get the box. <laughs> yes. Oh, you haven't got your box yet? No, I haven't got it yet. So, yeah. It's Ten days way... in MVP. Apparently so. It's uh, it's winging its way to you, chock full of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I just leave it sitting in the corner for a couple of days and build the anticipation before I open that. But anyway, uh, enough for me. Let's come back to the topic of the podcast. I'll let you guys introduce it. Yeah, veganism, vegetarianism, and different lifestyle choices around that, and being in the community. What that kind of means, what does that bring, or how difficult it is, what the obstacles you have around it. Is it difficult? Is it not difficult? I don't Mm. know. So, we will get on to that one, but just for a little bit of background from you guys on, obviously you've given us what your, your normal background is, but from a Sort of vegan lifestyle. How long have you been vegan for? Are you, both, are you both full vegan? I don't both know, actually. Vegan in terms of eating, just because vegan means differently for some people. 
because some there are some people out there who consider vegan as your whole life is veganism so from what you wear to the products that you use to what you eat and so when I say I'm vegan it's more about my eating rather than 100% vegan for what I wear eat and use every day Uh, but I'm, I'm working towards it though but it is quite hard because you know things like shoes they have animal products believe it or not so it's very hard to try and be vegan in all areas of life if you live somewhere where it's not widely embraced and you don't find those types of products in the stores and you have to go look for it online but for me I've I've been eating plant-based for over two years now it was kind of inevitable I don't know if it's the same for you Allison because I know every every person's journey is different for me it was I I used to eat meat and there were a couple of signs quite early on, you know, like in terms of being in the kitchen. I I don't know, for some reason I was always uncomfortable cutting chicken. <laughs> I know that's weird. Yeah. But you know when you see like the white cartilage or there's like a of splash course. of like yeah, a blood clot and then you slice it, it just kinda like pops and I'm like, I always went, Oh my god, I don't know if I can handle this. Um and then the other thing was over the years I I suppose I could use the term educated. I educated myself over time from from reading and, and documentaries about what actually happens in our food industry. And so at one point I became pescatarian and that led to being a vegetarian and then eventually one one day I was like, Okay, I'm just gonna commit all the way and see what happens and yeah. That was me over two years ago. I just made the decision and, and went for it. And, uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. So it's more around the eating habits then. It's, and the, obviously we all know what happens in the, the slaughterhouses and how things are, are done that way. I don't think we don't need to shock and awe anyone with that. But it's more around the sort of doing your bit for for the animals is really the the main reason that you've you decided to go down that route yeah so i've i've always been an animal lover and at one point in my childhood i had a baby chick pet but (laughs) sad sad story one day my brother left it unsupervised and the neighbor's cat got it so that was the end of that it was quite sad but um yeah it was through through that bonding with my pet chick that I don't know I just I just really liked it and then you know I started to question how come we eat other animals but then animals that we do have a connection with that is a pet we you know put that aside and so yeah yeah Yeah, for for me it's all why would you eat a chicken and not a dog yeah and that's, that's culture based as well right so yeah, it's, it's, it's certain places do eat dogs, certain places do eat cats. Yeah. Yeah, that's a delicacy in some places, the same as guinea pigs are gal- delicacy in some places. But here you would never think to eat a guinea pig. But there's certain places where that's a national dish. Yeah. Yeah. There's, so, there's like, certain places where bats are a, are a <laughs> delicacy. <laughs> well, that's true. Look, that and look, at the cha- look at the chaos yeah. that comes from eating a bat, yeah. apparently, See? right? Dirty so, Alison, what about your journey? Was yours similar? Uh, like, I, yeah, I re- some of what uh, Eliza said there really resonated with me. Um, that, like, I, I too, like, yeah, those bits of sinew in me. Um, and, like, when you crack an egg open and there's that little. Oh, red... yeah, the egg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in there, and you just go, yeah, no, I don't, I'm not, not okay with that at all. And, um, I, yeah, I really, really similar. Um, yeah. And funnily enough, yeah, chicken was the one for me as well, uh, Eliza. It was like, it just, I don't know what it is about that that bit of, I don't know, it's its like a nerve or something that runs through the chicken breast, isn't it? And it's just revolting. Um, but I, uh, it's its probably a little bit difficult for me to admit, but um, I, I, I became a vegetarian 
over 25 years ago, like when I was a teenager, so over wow. 30, 30 years ago, um, because I love animals and I could not like I could I I couldn't make the distinct the the distinction between what's an animal that you pet you pet and you love and what's an animal that you eat they're all just animals and uh, you know I'm I'm not racist and I'm not speciesist either you know I don't believe that we have any right to kill another human or or another living being of any kind um, and but for a long time I said that I didn't eat meat because it disagreed with me because it was easier to say that than it was to continually have this just headlocking argument about why you don't eat meat um, and yeah. it just wasn't worth it. it just wasn't worth the aggravation and the stress of it so I just said oh, I can't eat meat so I don't eat it right and I fish I got really sick on tin sea I was telling Andy Bibby about this today I got so sick I really like I was unable to move for vomiting and shitting myself because I ate tinned clams. Who buys tinned seafood? I mean, that was just, that's <laughs> Russian roulette, isn't it? You're just getting everything <laughs> you ask for if you buy tinned seafood. Like, so, and like, I've never been able to eat anything that even is remotely fishy since then. Like, somebody recommended to me, Charlotte, actually, our CFO said, oh, um, corn do these vegan fish fingers. And, uh, and they're really delicious. Uh, have them in a sandwich. So I thought, oh, I'll give them a try. But they're still way too, they're not very fishy, but they're still too fishy for me. Just I, I just can't do it. It's just too so much. There's nothing fishy about that. Eh? <laughs> so, do you know what's actually really nice? Princes do a alternative tuna and mayo. It's like seared watermelon. It's actually really nice. Get the f- so, so we'll come back to that show, yeah. right? Yeah, we'll come back to that. So, carry on with my journey. So, um, yeah, so I've been vegetarian for really, like, actually, probably thirty years, near thirty years. Yeah, it will be thirty years actually. Um, and then, and I, so I always, I always loved cheese. I was a bit hit and miss with eggs, depending on if you crack them open and they have the red bit in. Um, but a uh, um, Stuart, my boyfriend, uh, read an article like five, six years ago. Sorry, I don't know what's up with my headset. It just cuts out, but no, apparently. Cool. So start that again, the line of Stuart, my boyfriend. Yeah, Stuart um, read an article about five years ago uh, saying that the, a high proportion of the world world's ultra-athletes are vegan, and he's super into working out and, and being fit and healthy and stuff. So he said, oh, let's do it for 30 days and uh, and see how we feel. And like a week in, both of us were like 100%. We're like, and for me, it was just giving up che- cheese and milk and eggs and stuff like that. Um, uh, but like, still, like, I felt so much better. Um, and at, at, the, at that time, I was on um, low dose chemotherapy uh, as a, a treatment for an autoimmune illness that I've had since birth. It's kind of like an arthritis type illness. Um, and this this medication was so heavy. That I used to have to go and have a liver te- have a blood test every month to check that my liver was still functioning correctly, because your liver clears stuff out yeah. of your system and it puts it under such heavy load. And um, through all the years of having, and I've had an elbow replacement, um, and I need a knee replacement, and I've had all of this treatment for years and years for this autoimmune illness, and almost overnight, just giving up dairy, all of my inflammatory markers went to nil, and I take no medication now for uh, something that I've had medication for all of my life um Jeez. so you know if somebody just said to me like when i was a kid just stop eating dairy i'd have gone all right <laughs> everything would have been fine um but uh at, this, at the same time stuart read that that article um and and we decided to give it a go it was also around about the time that cowspiracy was doing the rounds i'm pretty sure that's about yeah. five years yeah. ago um and we watched that and then it led us to watching earthlings um yeah. and something else and forks over knives yeah watch forks over knives. i think earthlings and cowspiracy were the two that really hit me in the feels um and like i i had no idea that the the egg side and the dairy side in many instances is worse than how the the animals are treated for uh, for meat um and and so just some some really really horrific uh practices that go on um so like i i kind of sealed my my mind then that that was it i wasn't you know i wasn't going to be exploitative and and i decided actually to become what's referred to as straight edge um 
which means yeah. that I, I don't I don't drink, I don't do drugs. Yeah, I don't. Same as me. Yeah. Is that not just like a cool thing that the kids do when they go to gigs and they draw X's <laughs> in their hands these days and stand with a cross? It is, I mean, and I, I dress up like Henry Rollins and pretend to be a, a, a member of Black Flag. And uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think anyone's been fooled because my neck is surprisingly not wide enough. So uh, do, do you have a dare T-shirt? <laughs> I don't. I don't have a dare T-shirt. I feel really oh, like I'm you're, you're letting the side down there. Really you have. can't be straight yeah. edge if you don't have a dare T-shirt uh, and how, a black how, skip cap. Honestly, how have I even called myself straight edge in any way, shape or form? It's just <laughs> bonkers. The, but the, the one difference is like uh, straight edge is um, uh, you're supposed to be atheist as well. And I'm not atheist. I'm more agnostic. I believe that there is uh, like there's a higher frequency to everything in the universe without getting, you know, uh, lovey-dovey about it. Um, there's There's something out there. I don't think it's a god or a deity, but there is something that has a bigger understanding of what goes on than we do. So I'm not entirely straight edge, um, and I and I have taken drugs in the last two two uh, two years. I went and did mushrooms in uh, Amsterdam. That's vegetarian, no, that's fruit. Oh, that's <laughs> vegan, fine, right? it's vegan, right? It's fine. Yeah. I mean, mushrooms mushrooms get kept in dark and fed and shut. I also do try and buy ethical clothing, vegan clothing and stuff. But like, yeah. you know what? You, yeah. can dry, you can drive yourself nuts with it. Like, it, so we switched from like not using um, wool to cotton, but then cotton's really bad for the environment, the way that it's yeah. formed and all of that kind of thing. And organic cotton it uses 10 times the resources of regular cotton. Um, and it's it's a dirty farming process, so you can't have that. And actually, sheep shearing isn't really terrible if the sheep are really cared for, but you don't really know if the sheep are being cared for or not being cared for. And it, so, like, the, the thing is, people seem to feel like there's a requirement to be perfect with all of these things, and there isn't. Like, you don't have to be 100% vegan. Even in what you eat, you don't have to be 100% vegan. But if you're 80% vegan, the, the fewer cows and chickens that you are responsible for the, the death or mistreatment of is, is still better, right? Like it, no, none of this has to be perfect. It's it's just about making a shift in the right direction, I think. I think so, like, yeah. all the stuff you've said, kind of, there's a few questions I had coming into this and it was like that lifestyle choice element, is it food or is it a lifestyle choice? And obviously, as you see, you know, Eliza and Alison go touched on it there. You can go crazy with it, like even down to a car. Most cars, the well, plastic has got is, isn't vegan, isn't vegetarian. Yeah. So then you kind of look at that. So there's upholstery and Apple watch straps or other watch straps, other brands available, and and you can go crazy. You say, Eliza, like I know people that have got pleather shoes, if you want for a better word, I don't know what it's really called, but it's ve it's vegan friendly shoes, and they have to pay an absolute fortune for them because it's not mainstream. I don't yeah. know what it's like now. It may be better now. Obviously, Alison's got the stigma there itself where 20 years ago, and so it wasn't see, it wasn't accepted to be anything other than eating meat and, or just having a normal diet. And I say normal, and I do do inverted commas in my fingers at the time because that was the, the kind of common thing at that point in time. And as you say, there's other documentaries that have come out. Like recently, there was The Game Changer, which oh, was a yeah. big, massive one that started a massive movement. Probably at the time that Mark kind of made a change as well. Yeah. And I was heavily doing a lot of stuff at the gym at that point in time. And I thought about it, looked at the game changer, looked at how it's talking about. They start breaking down the blood, start doing all of that sort of stuff as well. And you and for as much as there's stuff there that's positive about promoting that for me, I can also find lots of other articles that completely contradict what they're saying. Yeah. So I find it really hard trying to educate myself and look about it as somebody who I've grown up eating meat. I, I have, yeah. my, my cousin was vegetarian and then was vegetarian but was eating fish. So pescatarian, isn't it? It's pescatarian, eats fish. So that yeah, kind of stuff, but still call himself vegetarian. And then people that went vegan and I know people that went vegan, like I stayed in a, I rented a flat with a few of my friends and one of the girls was vegetarian but used to eat what's it and bread sandwiches because that was all that she would want to eat. And I'm like, well, that's not a vegetarian diet. You're going to have to 100% substitute so much with other tablets to take, other vitamins and bits and pieces. And I appreciate you can be an absolute world athlete. You can be a power lifter. You can be a normal guy down the street being vegetarian or vegan. But for me, I find it it's easier for me. I'll go and cut chicken. I'll go and cut beef. I, I genuinely think if I needed to, I could slaughter something. 
if I needed to have that, right? You I don't know if I'd know, you know what, what I was doing. The thing is, you sure probably you probably could, but actually, like that's like it depends on what angle you come at this from, right? Like, so um, Eliza and I both have a, an ethical choice. We've made an ethical choice, but um, you're also uh, Eliza. You you keep fit, don't you? You you're like super healthy you work out a lot and stuff like that so i'm assuming there's a, a fitness angle to it for you as well um i oh i don't know <laughs> not I just, intentionally obviously I mean, like, is the answer there <laughs> yeah so so with my fitness i i do it just to to keep sane i suppose in terms of my well my well-being it is something i enjoy obviously there are days where i'm like oh i don't want to do this but then i do it and then i I feel fine but however I do I have noticed that since I have gone vegan um it's it's been a lot better like I can run for longer I don't know if that's a placebo effect or anything but it's it's good and it's it's funny when you were talking about the whole dairy thing because I can relate to that so when I used to live and work in Melbourne in Australia so what I have for breakfast is porridge is oats and back then I used to use uh, dairy milk, so cow's milk. And at one point, every morning I started feeling sick, like I wanted to throw up. And there were times where I couldn't eat my porridge. And then someone one day suggested, oh, maybe you just can't handle dairy anymore. So then I switched to using something like soy milk or almond milk. I, I went through all of the plant-based milks to find out which one I liked. And then I just, I didn't feel sick anymore. So I think over time, my body just didn't like dairy. Because, yeah, I just, I remember it. I used to feel sick afterwards, like, I don't know, maybe like 30 minutes later after it had digested. And it bugged me. And then one day I just stopped and that's how it happened. Yeah. I, I don't drink a lot of milk. I will have milk, but like in coffee and stuff, I'll have oat milk or soy milk as a choice. Yeah. But that choice for me is because... Similar to what you're saying with milk, I just, I'm not a fan of milk, but I think it was years ago. And it's, it's a mindset thing for 100% for me. And it's, I suppose to some extent, it touches on as well the kind of well being of the animals. Cows yeah. have got obviously like the seven stomachs or whatever it is. And <laughs> so I remember. Just like me. I'm sure they, do, they have multiple stomachs for doing different things in the way that they process yeah. and digest it and things like that. But I remember reading or hearing at some point in time that. Part of the reason why they have to pasteurise milk, and it's not because it's the quickest thing in the world when it goes pasteurised. Uh, but, but um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, but because they milk the cows so much and they're forced milked and they're and it's not natural. It's not a natural cycle that they have it. It's yeah. producing extra in their stomachs. They get ulcers and different bits and pieces like that. So therefore they pop, and that's why that's why they have to do all this process in the milk. And I was like, oh my god. I don't really want to drink milk again. I don't know how true that is or not. It's no, one of those urban myths. I think it probably well, is true. I'm saying that because I don't have a scientific background to back up. But I believe that that is true. So for me, I think there's an element of that's why I don't drink milk. But it's interesting that both yourself and Alison are saying that you have that adversity of milk. And obviously, Alison, for her, it's 100% work. She's now off meds and stuff like that. But as a spanner in the works, every kid now has this allergy to milk or they have an allergy to this or they have an allergy to that. Why is that? Is that because we're mass producing stuff and we're mass slaughtering animals and doing everything else and doing mechanically reclaimed meats and stuff like that where it's not good, it's not the whole hearty food that your parents grew up with because that was all natural and it wasn't pumped full of sulfates and different chemicals. Like you can go and buy slices well, of I'm, yeah, I'm, the, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one that's a meteor here and I'm actually saying the meat that you buy is crap, right? <laughs> that. You can go and buy cold cuts from a deli counter that's pumped full of sulfates and different stuff to make that meat last weeks. That's not natural. No. So yeah. I, should you shift or not? And I, I, and I don't know. I definitely, I think that's where I sit. So Eliza, do you find, I know you said you maybe thought it was a placebo effect, but working out is a lot easier or you've got, you feel you've got more energy working out yeah, since you've switched? Yeah, it's funny because before I, I still remember this before I went vegan my you know my mood and my energy levels weren't as great and when I became vegan you know I noticed probably about after a month where 
I can wake up early, I can keep working, you know, even up until eight or nine in the evenings, because usually I do my work and then I do like the stuff that I want to do after work, the real stuff that I want to do, let's be honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, in the evening. The interesting bits. <laughs> yeah. You know, just doing fun stuff with Pair Automate. And, you know, I can I can keep going up until, you know, around nine or, or ten thirty. And I just I just found I had more zest for life and, and more energy and it was a lot more happier and um you know people initially didn't know that I had changed being well going from eating meat to being vegan and I think people eventually noticed one day in terms of my workmates when I just started to just have salads but without without the meat and yeah it's 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 been good and I I really enjoy it in terms of the whole um not eating meat and being fit a book that i did get this is way before i went vegan it was given to me as a present it's called the no meat athlete and it's about this guy who is a marathon runner i think he's also an ultra marathon runner and um he won his races as a vegetarian and then one year he decided to go vegan and from running as a vegan he noticed that his speed times significantly improved and then he just kept with it and so that's why he decided to write that book and it actually has actual recipes for athletes to help them with their endurance and you know what they need to eat the day before before a big run and and all of that and um yeah I still have that book today it's in was he the one who was in Game Changers um I don't because he was an ultra marathon runner who switched and then basically was setting personal bests and everything like he done a, he also got yeah. the Guinness Book of Records doing like a world, I don't know, well, was tour. See, there's part of me that, that, that hears stories like this, and I feel like I'm Val Kilmer and uh, Top Gun and want to go, oh, shit, right? <laughs> there's something else that's changed. And I say that because I don't know. Yeah. I can't prove yeah. it, I must prove it, but I'm like, does changing a diet have that sort of impact on you? I don't, I don't know. It would be interesting well, to see, I actually. Think, I think so, because I... It, I guess it all comes down to what you eat right. And when you go vegan, well, I, actually, I don't know about all vegans, but certainly for me, when I went vegan, I I eat whole foods. Like, I don't really eat a lot of processed foods, so things mm-hmm. like, you know, um, beyond meat or the Impossible Burger. Well, A, we don't really have that in New Zealand. I think it's starting to come out, but it's not readily available here. And it wasn't in Australia at the time. Um, but I tend to stay away from, you know, the mock meats that you can buy in the deli or the frozen section. I will eat mock meat if I am out somewhere and, you know, it's on the menu, then, yeah, I'll give it a go. But generally at home, I eat a lot of whole foods. And when you eat a lot of whole foods, because your your insides aren't spending much time trying to break down something that is processed, it fills you up for longer and you just – suck the energy out of whatever you've eaten and so you just you're pretty much just a a productive bee all day no, i completely sense. agree with that 100 <laughs> and i think that's kind of what i was saying at slightly earlier as well is everything that was so mass produced whether it's meat and everything else it's, it doesn't matter there's no real from the ground to your plate or from the farm to your plate it's all going through so many different processes, but the mock meat is an interesting one. It comes back to the point that we said we'd come back to. And Mark was talking about, we're like, it's not mock meat, but just everything that's a mock alternative. Yeah. Like yeah. watermelon as tuna fish, chicken sausages, corn <laughs> bacon. <laughs> that, that's all stuff that, as a, like, not having made that choice really confuses me. Yeah. Because I think if you've made a choice to move away from eating meat, why do you want something that's meat flavoured? Yeah, like, uh, I, I, just, sorry, Eliza, just to, to um, jump in there. Like, yeah, I agree um, with everything that uh, Eliza said, which is I, I eat a whole foods plant based diet. And so most of what we eat at home is rice, beans. We do eat tofu, which you could argue is a processed food, but like it's not in this, I don't class that as being in the same thing. We do make our own safe, um, uh as a, as a protein source, but generally we get protein from vegetables, beans, rice, that kind of thing. Um, and 
like it doesn't matter if you eat meat or if you're pescatarian or you're vegetarian or you're vegan if you eat like shit you're going to feel like shit and yes. if you look at like the, the you you can't outrun a bad diet either it doesn't matter how much you work out if you if you eat crap and you eat too much and you have too many calories and you're going to be overweight and you're going to be in bad shape um the 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 vegetarians I know go, oh yeah, I got really sick when I was vegetarian and I had to go back to eating meat. And I'm like, what kind of things did you eat? Oh, pizza, pizza, <laughs> this shit like that. And you're like, well, of course you felt like shit. Anybody would feel like shit eating stuff like that. Um, and it, like, if you look at how how everybody shops, like this is driven by consumer behaviour. Everybody wants everything cheap. They want stack it high, sell it cheap. They want to shop in little and places like that. And if you shop there, you're buying meat from animals that were treated horrifically and they they were pumped full of shit cheap antibiotics and all kinds of steroids they were kept in awful conditions so their their meat is absolutely filled with cortisol and where do you think that goes when you eat it because it doesn't get flushed out by cooking it goes into your system and there's a reason why we're seeing increased instances of people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes and seeing increased instances of people with um, so much fat around their belly from all the extra cortisol they're eating, because that it makes you put on fat around your belly. And uh, and all of that stuff is just, it's really bad for you. But like, fine, if you're going to eat meat, eat meat. But go to a place where you know where that animal, how that animal was treated and that it was looked after really, really well. Um, and that the, that the animal isn't pumped full of antibiotics and steroids. Yeah, see, I'm still... I mean, I've been, what, seven, eight months now that I've been vegan or vegetarian stroke vegan. So I've been trying to do five days a week vegan, two days a week veggie. And it's only yeah. eggs are the one thing that I've been really struggling with because, I mean, I can make an omelette and load that omelette up with mushrooms, pepper, spring onion, and have something that will last. Like, when I have a full omelette with all that, I'm full for hours. I'm like, I don't need anything for ages. And that's what's that was the one thing kind of that was my part that I was struggling with. But I'm still trying to find out what's good, what's bad, what's indifferent. Because as you said there, Alison, if you buy shit, if you buy processed stuff, I mean, Beyond Burgers, we picked up some Beyond Burgers last week. It's like 450 calories per patty. Then you look at putting like your what your thin on it, and then you by the time you've put stuff on it, that's like almost as bad as going to McDonald's. So yeah, being vegan's great and having a good diet. But if you buy shite, I'm like vegan chocolate. Oh yeah, look at all this new vegan chocolate. Yeah, it's great, but it's still fucking chocolate. It's, it's still really, it's full really of expensive. Shite. Yeah, it's really expensive. It's full of yeah. sugar. It's junk food. Like junk yeah. food is junk food, whether it's plant based yeah. or not. Exactly. Junk is junk, right? And it's fine if you want to like I, I bought shares in Beyond Meat because you know I can see that <laughs> being really popular. But I don't I don't actually buy Beyond Meat burgers. I think the last time Stuart and I bought burgers from the supermarket, it's got to be over a month ago at, at the, at the at the closest um which we, we just don't buy that stuff we don't eat it like a friend of mine came around and she said oh um a bit peckish have you got something to eat and she was like have you got any pasta no have you got any bread no have you got any potatoes no don't eat any of that stuff. <laughs> it's not part of our diet it's just not what we yeah. eat right um well potatoes now because i bought an air fryer so like potatoes <laughs> back on the menu over here but that's only to get in grips with the air fryer and then you'll substitute that for something else exactly like sweet potatoes yeah, right. well, sweet potatoes. Yeah, I, like I wasn't a fan of sweet potato fries, but Mark gave me a recipe for making them with uh, Nando's peri peri salt. So um, kind of, yeah, right. And now I'm converting to those instead. So, mm, so but I think it's. It... I try to think how to word this in a kind of sensitive way. No, fuck it. It's just what it is, just, right? Just throw it out there. You're so it's easy to turn around and say, yeah, it's all about the food that you buy, and it's great. So obviously during lockdown. I've been going local, I've been avoiding the supermarkets, I've been going yeah. to like the farm shop and I've been getting uh, meat that's been butchered at the farm, I've been buying veg that's, been but that's, that's grown there and stuff like that, or they're getting it from straight from the fruit market and it's coming there. It's costing me so much more money than I ever did before to buy convenience store, go to Asda, go to the supermarket, get everything. Yeah. And I'm fortunate that I can do that. And because I've got less travel costs and stuff, it's fine to pay that extra money, it balances out, right? It's like everybody's saying that their travel costs and stuff in this whole COVID lockdown is minimised, but their food and alcohol costs have went up massively because everybody's just eating and drinking. 
Yeah. But there's lots of people who can't afford to do that. There's lots of people who have to go to the stores where you're getting ten chunks of meat, ten big bits of frozen meat, and everything. But you know what? Them. But that's but that's fine. And if that's your if that's the situation that you find yourself in, and you have a limited budget, then the one thing I would cut out is shit meat. And I would go right. I can't buy organic, but I can buy veg that I know are, are clear. You can at least buy your fruits and vegetables fresh, and make more of your meals with that. And maybe get a block of tofu, or you know. But like, if you're expecting that you're going to eat meat every day, and it's going to be good quality, and it's not going to be pumped full of shit, and it's not going to be junk, then like that's not realistically going to happen. But you, like, if you can only afford the lower end of stuff, then make all of your food about veg fresh vegetables right make it about stuff that you can buy cheaply because i promise you Stuart and i eat like kings every single week we literally eat like like the, the roman empire right <laughs> and i feed the two of us for 40 pounds I, I spend 40 pounds or 45 pounds at the supermarket every week to feed two people for the week and he eats he eats like a teenager like a hungry hungry teenager so he's you're like 30 years in you get 30 years experience at doing this that's fair right that's right. a fair point but do you know what you just need to like the thing is the, the other thing that i have and uh, like anybody any one of you that isn't ian that has gone down this vegan journey will back me up here like everybody expects to go vegan by veganizing what they already eat and that's not what no. we did yeah. we changed what we eat we just went like we yeah. don't eat vegetable lasagna we just don't eat lasagna we eat different stuff I and think that's the lunch pin right there, Alice, and that is yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, fair enough, you can substitute things. Like, I could be flexitarian, mm. and I could have a vegetarian lasagna, or I could have a, a veggie burger of some sort, like even one of the beetroot burgers where it bleeds. I mean, that, yeah. that, that is for a meat eater who wants to be vegetarian. <laughs> that's not for a vegetarian, right? Of that's course it is. Late, right? yeah, but the cows will thank you for it, right? Exactly. So that's what that part is there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. where that's where I've definitely to, at the very start that's where I was going wrong. I was like, oh yeah, let's get the, the veggie lasagna, let's get the the Beyond Burger, let's get the, the fishless fish fingers and all that sort of stuff. Are Whereas the Beyond Burgers are the ones that bleed. Is that what they're called? Yeah. That is, is that right, okay. It's weird, yeah. That freaked me out a little bit. I didn't know <laughs> if I'd put so the other thing that I've been doing is like when I have bought that sort of stuff, I find a lot of them just have no taste to them. So yeah. I've been putting so much seasoning on it that the seasoning's probably making it worse for me. Here's the best tip. Here's the best tip anyone, vegan or non-vegan, will ever Don't give you. Don't buy from right? Beyond Burger because you're lying um, in Alison's pocket. Yeah, <laughs> buy, buy all of Beyond Burger. No, right, so the best thing is everybody thinks MSG is bad for them because some restaurant critic in, that lived in New York in the 80s went, kept going to a Chinese restaurant like, all day every day or like five times a week and he was getting migraines and he decided <laughs> and wrote a paper on it and he decided that it was because of the msg in the food in the chinese restaurant and ever since then everybody's gone you can't yeah like if you're having msg you're having a stroke right that where that comes from? From? that's where that comes from right msg is actually better for you than salt or soy sauce because it's way way lower in sodium and there are actually no statistically proved side effects from it whatsoever and it is the delicious maker i promise you was oh, that just like aspartame then like it's good for you yeah, aspir just aspartame. Like to say it's rubbish aspartame actually is a bit of a different well we can move on to that if you like that's a different one um the msg actually is not bad for you i mean you wouldn't want to like you, eat it by the spoonful but like if you used it in place of salt it's actually healthier for you than using salt. It's got less sodium, so it's actually going to do less damage to you. Um, and there's a reason why Japanese people are, are generally not very overweight, but all die of stroke and heart attack because they've got so much salt in their diet and so sodium, right? So MSG is the delicious baker. You could put sh you could put MSG on a pile of shit and it will taste delicious. <laughs> oh, no. It's literally you know, right. the best. <laughs> That's what, next, next social event that we're at, Alison, you're going to get served up a steaming hot pile of MSG shit. Yes. I'll, I'll specially order that for you. Can I bring okay. one of my dog's turds, actually? Because my dogs are vegan as well. So, which well, is a you know, that's the next that, question. That was my oh, question, right? Oh, my gosh. Because <laughs> I was curious wow. about this, right? So this comes back to this. Kind of moving on a little bit topic-wise, you three are vegetarian or vegan. We'll just say vegan because, Mark, you're almost there and that is the goal for you, right? So you're all vegan. Well, I am. I've got 
I'm going to just, before we go on to the dogs one, right, so Eliza gave me a recipe for doing omelettes. Yeah. Oh, with the chickpea. Yes. Yeah. Chickpea flour. It looks I've good. I've done it. I done it at the weekend. It was okay. I got some black salt today delivered. The kalak namak, uh, yes. yes, yes, that's what Delicious. I buy this weekend as well. Yeah, and that Indian honestly, black salt. yep, that's the one. Yep, and honestly, that made the difference. It now, so <laughs> the texture itself. Ian's like, it, what the French toast? <laughs> no, 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 I'm good with this actually. Like, so I love trying. It's it. basically <laughs> right. So it's it was like chickpea flour. Bacon soda. I've also used onion powder as well in it. And garlic powder. It's oh, good. I never put any garlic powder in it, but that's a good yeah. thing. Oh, onion powder flame. and garlic powder are like best buddies, Mark. Yeah, they are. I don't know why they sell them it's separate. Flavor maker. Okay, so like I've got garlic powder there anyway as in my spice rack, so I'll put that in. And then this black salt. And then it was like 250 ml of water. Mix it all together. Boom. It was like nothing else. So, I mean, I that was... The, that has more protein than like four eggs because chickpea flat the gram flour is usually either purely chickpea or it's chickpea and yellow split split pea and it has such a high but digestible protein profile. It's yeah. it's amazing. That's why stuff. is amazing because that's made with gram yeah, flour. Yeah, yeah. Right? And and poppadoms and chapatis and naan breads and bhajis, all that stuff, all using gram flour. Yeah. Honestly, that's so that was one thing. So I was getting my dog walker also has some rescue hens so i was using i mean at least it was uh, the way i was telling myself anyway they were rescue hens they were laying eggs they were doing it regardless so that was my social conscious on that one but now that i can actually make this and it tastes good and it's a good substitute so what's the texture like i i it's it's a bit it's a mix between like an omelette or scrambled egg and pancake. It's just like in between. It's not a pancake and it's not a scrambled egg. It could be because I'm fucking up cooking it, but that's that's the texture. <laughs> and it's honestly, it tastes amazing. That I use, black I use salt that is just to, yeah. Good. The Kalanamak, the, the black salt, I use that to make um, tofu scrambled eggs because I used to one of my favourite dishes was scrambled egg on toast. Yeah. Um, n- no red dot dependent. As if I cracked an egg open and there was a red dot in there, it was all bets were off. There was no way any egg was happening that day. But it doesn't um, mean anything if that's an egg because they're still they're not. They're I know, not but I was, but I was squeamish about it. I was squeamish about it, and it just I like okay. I, I think my dad told me when I was a kid, yeah, chip forming or something like that, and I've just gone no, nope, no way. Like and and going back to the thing about the pasteurized. Uh, milk like if you think about your food in terms of if you have to cook it for it not to make you sick or if you have to pasteurize it for it not to make you sick then should you really eat it at all should it really go into your body like you know (laughs) it's a there's a reason the circle of life though as well what circle of life like the whole animals wild animals <laughs> well, I'll tell you the, what, world, if, the if world's not overrun the that's... world's not overrun by flies because spiders eat the flies there's no there's, the world's not overrun by spiders because birds eat the spiders all right well if that were true then we would be eating, being getting eaten by lions and tigers and bears but we're not we have guns but, that, but then, <laughs> then you've already broken the circle of life haven't you no, we just championed it. Like, so if you if you actually want that to happen, if you actually want the circle of life to, I tell you what, Ian, if you can if you can chase down a cow and kill it with your own teeth and eat it raw, then you can have it. Have it. No, no, no. This is like That's... this is this is like where I feel like I'm going to quote aliens. I'm going to be like, no, we've got sh- we've got sharp knives, sticks, fricking lasers. We've got all of that. I don't need to chase it down. Yeah, I, 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 I'll broken be... the circle of life. That's that's the thing. Like, if you want to have the circle of life, then, no, fine, I adapted. But then be prepared. I adapted, to be, Alison. But like, if you you, have, you can't have it always. If you want the circle of life, otherwise it's just like it's just humans in the middle of a food chain all the way around them, isn't it? Where we just eat everything: bats, lions, chickens, <laughs> goats, whatever. <laughs> Other people, you know. Well, like, where where do you draw the line? But like, if you if you want to carry on the circle of life thing, then yeah, fine. So, but just be prepared to be chased by tigers when you leave the house in the morning. And... There's a reason why in Africa they have slam doors. Actually, that's not lions. That's other people killing other people. <laughs> Sorry, I got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a nice sideline. I enjoyed it tremendously. Mm. But uh, but yeah. So like, who wants to rag on me for the vegan dogs? 
No, it was more well, a question. No, it was, it was a question not, around, like, that's your lifestyle choice. If I was to come to your house, Alison, can I bring meat in with me? Because yeah. obviously you're a non-meat house. Would Would you prepare meat for someone? Would you know if you were having a family over? Would you happily prepare meat? I, I would. I would disinfect everything in my kitchen after you left, but I would do it for you if that's. But you know what? Like, um, if I go around to a friend's house for dinner, they cook vegan. They, they generally cook vegan. Um, uh, there's um, one that just because that's who you associate with, because it's uh, a clique. No, they're not vegan. Like um, <laughs> my friends Alex and Warren are not vegan in any way, shape, or form. Um, but like uh, she'll cook vegan or she'll cook two meals. She'll cook something vegan for us, yeah. and she'll make mm. like she makes a Thai curry and she has a vegan pot and a pot with chicken. Yeah. Uh, but like everything else is is the same kind of thing. Um, and if anybody comes around here, I'll, like I generally cook vegan because most people say, actually, why don't you cook me something that you normally eat? Yeah. Um, to be fair, that's how I would go, right? It's it's like, I think I have that mindset. If you go to another country or somebody else's house, it, it's their domain, right? You can't. Yeah, remember, we went out for we went out for food, or when was it? If it was before Christmas. Remember, we went out mm-hmm. for to grab some food, and we're like. Well, you're vegan, so let's just find a vegan place. And it's like you never thought anything about it. We just found somewhere that had that yeah, food. Because I'm I I because I eat both ways, I'll eat anything. So I don't actually really care. Yeah. As much as I'll happily go to a vegan place as long as it's good food. I'm not I'm the same as like I wouldn't be going somewhere where the vegetarian option is, do you want a vegetable tart? Oh. I mean that's that's an excuse, right? Just while you said that, right? Did I tell you the wedding that I went to oh, about six months ago? The the vegan option was one bit of broccoli on a sliced potato. <laughs> Seriously, it was they had one. That's, potato. that's the chef was super offended, right? Would you they mean you vegetarians and vegans? It was one <laughs> potato sliced into like like you do fritters. Oh, they had some broccoli. Potato. Oh, fuck knows what it was, but honestly, <laughs> I was like, they paid they paid forty pound for that. I'm like, oh, wow. I get their money back, Jesus! It's because yeah. somebody sprinkled salt from a great height and made their arm look like a swan when <laughs> they were doing salt. it. It was black salt they sprinkled from a great height. How about yeah, yourself, Eliza? Right. Like when it comes to you for eating with friends and family and stuff that come round, what's your sort of take? Are you a non-meat household completely, or would you do it, or or what's the deal there? I've had a friend come come over, and um, so husband and wife, and they don't they're not vegans and so what what I did was I went and grabbed some pies from the local farmers market so this lady she sold vegan pies as well as meat pies and so I picked like I don't know I think it was like steak and cheese and a lamb pie and so we put them in the oven but man that smell of the lamb pie I was like oh I can't deal with this (laughs) <laughs> so when they left, I had to open the windows to try and get, you know, that aroma out. Open the windows, <laughs> light up the candles, get the incense burning. Yeah, no, because I, I hadn't I hadn't smelled that in a long time, you know, in, in my own kitchen. So I was just like, mm. oh, I don't know if I'm if I enjoy this. Well, I didn't enjoy it. But um when I go around to my mom's or my sister's place, they're you know, they're pretty understanding. They'll have something around for me to eat, like whether it's a snack or an actual meal so every now and then we go around to my parents house for like a weekend dinner which is Mm. which is quite nice and in terms of when when we you know go to events so microsoft events it can be hit and miss so my first proper microsoft event was the microsoft mvp summit last year and you know i clearly put vegan in my dietary requirements that was a struggle (laughs) Really? Um, yeah. So we had we had uh, like a dinner with everyone, you know, in the business applications category. So they they put this dinner for you, and the only thing that I could eat was I think it was a coleslaw, and everyone else around me was just you know tucking into, wow. you know, things like pasta and and the meats and stuff. And so when I got back to my hotel, I had to go and grab something quickly to eat, and then meet up with everyone else at at this bar called joeys and then the next microsoft event that i had attended last year was the ignite orlando event and that was that was actually pretty good and that's when i met manuela for the first time and she was saying that the previous year they had a really good you know 
buffet for people with different dietary requirements. So there's this area in the hall where people who have dietary requirements can go to. So they have things like halal, kosher, vegan, uh, gluten, intolerant, and all all of those types of dietary requirements. So it's actually it was actually really nice. Yeah, and and How the was food. The, was, Catherine? the food. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was um, excellent. Early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think I think I think it's getting better. I don't know, but normally I have food in my bag with me. Yeah. So, I have, so you like, prepare fruit. for actually, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because the last thing I want is to you know starve. And I remember when I went to the I'm pretty sure it was the first Dynamics Three Six Five Saturday in Wellington for the break in the morning morning tea it was rice crackers and a slither of avocado and i was like really <laughs> this is wow. what i have <laughs> and avocado is really bad it might taste nice i like avocado but it's so bad yeah. for the farming because it's now such a popular popular fruit or veg or whatever it is people are being people, killed over this people shit. are being killed for it people are yeah changing water flows natural water flows redirecting them because avocados need so much water to grow yeah. it's crazy but anyway that's a side line yeah. so i mean i i kind of do the same or have been doing the same i've been taking additional things with me just in case like yeah. i i've been taking like a packet of protein nuts some just i've even started carrying little containers of soya milk around with me as well See, just I do that too. I just carry like Haribo and, and stuff like that, like oh, all the really good now, sweets. I know, I know for a podcast that um, I know it's a podcast and not visual, but oh, I have that. those. Megan, Megan Walker. So Megan Walker, if What's you're that? listening, I she she sent me some these, uh, these tang worm things. things. Oh, okay. They're actually really nice. Yeah, for purposes of people who can't what? see here, I feel like I'm a police officer. For the purpose of the tape, the. <laughs> The person here is showing some tang worms and a yellow packet that are vegan. Again, Who gave uh, them to you, Eliza? Pardon? Who gave them to you? Megan. Megan Walker. Oh, cool. Yeah, so last year, or maybe it was the year before as well, I sent people some care packages. I think I sent one to Megan, Ryan, and Sarah Creechley. Um, this was before I left Melbourne, and, and Megan, she sent me one. And um, inside was, yeah, some vegan treats. And I still have those, um, the candy that she gave me. Because the funny thing with me is when it comes to junk food, it stays in my cupboard for a long time because I just, I don't really reach out for junk food anymore. And so those sweets that she gave me have actually shipped all the way from Melbourne <laughs> to here in New Zealand. And I still haven't eaten them. So from the but UK worry, to I'm Melbourne trying. to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I checked the expiry date. It's fine, but where were know, they made first I've, off? Like that, they've travelled so so far about. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting point actually that you talk about the the confidence in food and stuff like that. I know we kind of mentioned it at the the top of this podcast when we started recording, but me and Mark, when we we made a very last minute adjustment to Scottish Summit, so we had two lots of food. We had we were we were preparing for Scottish Summit. We had a speakers meal the night before. Yeah. And we had food on the day for the for the attendees and stuff like that. The speakers meal the night before, we had this flippant, right, let's just do a 50-50, a vegan, like a vegetarian or vegan curry and a meat curry. Just do it. We were feeding like 90 people, so let's just do 45 each way straight down the middle. And then Mark was like, do you know what? See, for the food on the actual day, I'm just doing vegetarian and vegan. I was like, oh, we can't do that. Like, no way, we can't do that. And then thought, actually, why can't we? Let's just do it. Let, let's make a stance and do it. And we had vegan sandwiches and, and cakes and stuff like that. And to be fair, it was gone. I didn't even get any of it. I had to go across the road to the supermarket to go and buy food for myself. <laughs> Are you for real? So this, the entire Scottish summit yep. was plant-based? Yep. Yes. Oh, Seven, my eight. God. <laughs> 700 people plant-based. And wow. we had two, two complaints about it. Now, they weren't really even complaints, so... If you think uh, for one day we had seven hundred people eating plant based meal. Wow, that's and the comments were like, I would have liked to have had a choice. And we were like, Oh, oh you, you. you got you got lunch for free. <laughs> it was a free yeah. event. So yeah. there goes your choice, right? Your choice is if you don't like it, go and buy a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, we had a complete plant-based day and the night before, the vegetarian or vegan option was way better. In effect, it was basically the same curry sauce. It was just like cauliflower that was in it rather than chicken. Yeah. And it was a million times better. Yeah, it was numbers. It was really good. I didn't even get any. Like, I remember, <laughs> like, the amount of times I've been to, um, like, a D365 Saturday at the Microsoft offices, and they have a gender-neutral toilet, but they have no vegan options. Like, how is that even possible in this day and age? So the last time I went Packed there, the I ended up... Exercise. <laughs> I, I managed to get a packet of ready-salted Walker's crisps and a banana, and that's all I ate all day. They didn't even have any soy milk for coffee. See, I was speaking at a Microsoft event in Edinburgh, now, all the guests and attendees were given their form, what would you like, what are your di- dietary requirements? As a speaker, I wasn't given one. Ah, oh, interesting. So I was like, I just got what was there. Again, I had my, like, I don't, the grazed nuts, you know, the protein mix nuts that you get. Yep. I, keep, I basically keep a bag of them. With you like to keep a things. bag, you like to keep a sack of grazed nuts, do you not? <laughs> Yes, I, I like to graze my nuts on the AstroTurf, yep. <laughs> That, just, There's always one, isn't there? I'm just tonight, Matthew. I'll be playing the role of Keith Watley. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, that's that's that surprised me a little bit. I mean, it wasn't. Do you know what? I didn't even think about it until I got there on the day, and because I was there early and setting up, well, do you want a cup of tea? I'm like, yeah. Um, and then I thought, wait a minute, you're not going to have soy milk, are you? I'm like. So, yeah, I'm still at times naive to some of the things where I should be maybe a little bit more prepared. But when I'm going yeah. to work, I mean, I, when was it? Well, obviously, before all this nonsense happened, they were making soup and bringing soup in for everyone. So I actually made soup and took a vegan soup into the office. Now, I know you most folk are like, but well, isn't all soup vegan? But that's no, not because you stopped. Oh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Stock keeps got milk in them. Yeah. Yep. So you can get vegan stock cubes or you use the the bowl or what's it called now bullion bullion Bullion. that's one yep i can never pronounce that you can get some really nice ones there's some gorgeous ones that are american that you can get on amazon now i'll send you some links they're so good but like you don't have amazon here (laughs) what you know (laughs) do we need to send you a care package do you have- we don't have Amazon, we don't have Ikea, we don't have Costco, we don't have Audi. Yeah, we're like our own some, little country. Have, well, yeah, but like it's a beautiful country, right? So, you know. Yeah, it is. I'm amazed that you don't have Amazon. Yeah, we don't. There's somewhere else that doesn't have Amazon that I heard about, like Spain or somewhere like that doesn't have Amazon. Is that like political reasons that it just has never moved into they're that territory? Office. They don't have, they, they haven't set up in Spain, in Spain anyway, they just haven't bothered. Mm. Setting up a distribution. So their advert, their whole little tagline of the A to the Z, the we arrow, isn't true. They don't go from A to Z. <laughs> They're liars. No. Definitely no. not. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, do you have like a Whole Foods market or Trader Joe's or anything like that? No, we don't. We just have supermarkets and farmers markets. That's that's about it. I I tend to buy my fruit and veggies from the farmers market, and then anything that I can't get, I'll get from the supermarket but we also have um you know like this the specialized shops so we have like the southeast asian shops where you can get spices and mm. the different sources from around the world so that's that's also around but we don't have whole foods we don't have trader joe's yeah there's no aldi i i first learned of aldi when i moved to australia i was like oh what is this <laughs> So, yeah. so here's an interesting thing, because I first learned of Aldi when I worked in Germany. My first recruitment job was out in Frankfurt, Germany. And um, I went to the supermarkets there and like their supermarkets are basically Aldi and Lidl. Those are the like supermarkets. Yeah. They don't yeah. have like Sainsbury's and Tesco and stuff like that. And like zero customer service. Right. Which was a shock for me in 1998. Like and they like the staff don't talk to you. They don't even look at you. In fact, like if you try and talk to them, they'll just say get out. Like you know, it's <laughs> bonkers place. So like that, that was a real shock to me. It was it was a massive shock. But like, funnily enough, I used to buy soy milk when I was in Germany because their dairy out there is awful. Just, I don't know what they do to it, but it's just just dreadful. I think I could stop. Oh, I don't have a lot of dairy, but certainly like bread and stuff like that. If I would stayed in a different country, I'd totally eat less. The bread in Germany is rubbish. The bread in America is rubbish. 
No, American bread is awesome. You just no, need to get... No, it's too sweet. <laughs> no, not the, not the packaged stuff. You need to go to the bakers and get like sourdough and... Oh, yeah, okay. If you, talk about, if you go to talk about that, I suppose I've got the beard for it, so I'm okay to eat sourdough and stuff, <laughs> Yeah, right? you totally fit right in with the hipster. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so interesting about the whole around the world, um, you know, in terms of everyone's eating and the different styles of food. So I... For mo- most of you who are listening, hopefully would know that I traveled the world last year. So I went to all these different countries, not only for, you know, enjoying life, but also meeting the Microsoft community along the way. And, you know, what was nice was that everyone was welcoming and understanding of, of me being vegan. So there was probably only one event where they didn't have vegan options, but everywhere else was pretty good. Like I remember... When I was in Singapore, um, the Microsoft community that I did meet, you know, went out of their way to make sure that I had something vegan to eat. And then same in the Netherlands, Rebecca and Daniel Laskowitz made sure that there was something vegan for me before I presented and it was a vegan pizza. And then the next one was probably over in Washington, D.C., like Mike, uh, Mike Ox, James Novak, they made sure that you know, I could fill in a form and I'm sorry, Mark didn't have that same experience <laughs> where I actually had like a vegan lunch ready for me, which was, which was nice. So um, it was all good. And yeah, everyone in the community has been really nice and, and understanding about it, which is good. I mean, before I did go vegan, I, I did used to get anxiety when it came to these events because I never knew if people would be accepting I don't know what it is it's it's just that mental thing where you don't want to be an inconvenience for everyone and you don't want to make a big deal out of it but then at the same time you don't want to have that headache all day because you haven't eaten um, enough food and you know kind of be grumpy towards the end that's that's really hard but I think now I'm I'm comfortable with it and now you know if I know that I am going to an event and if it is people that don't know me in terms of how I eat then I just have food with me in in my bag so that I don't get that awful headache throughout the day um see that's where yeah. I think I'm all right because I I do a lot of fasting as well yeah so if I go somewhere and there isn't food I just I can just go without Oh man, I'm the opposite. Like I, I get hungry. I don't know how he does. It. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I do yeah. not understand how he passes. He's like, oh, I've not eaten in 17 bajillion hours. I'm like, I would be, I'd be ripping your face off right now if that was me. No. Next yeah. week it is 36 hours with no food, 12 hours with, and 36. That gives me anxiety. Minutes. That gives me Shut anxiety. Hearing that. So you're gonna go for three, two and a half day, no day and a half. God, man, a half. Right. Yeah. day and a half without eating. Yeah, so That's I how shocked you are by it, Alison. You can't even shocked. work it out. You just know the hell of a long <laughs> I can't. time. Like it, just, it was right. just too so, much. I just fainted. So I, finish, so I finish eating, say, Monday night at 8 o'clock. That'll be me then till 8 o'clock on Wednesday morning. Then Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock, that'll be me then till Friday morning at 8 o'clock. I'm noping right out of that. No. Now, bearing in mind, Alison, <laughs> he does this when he is also doing walks, cycles out and about it's not like he's 36 hours in his bed fasting he's actually still active yeah yeah otherwise it's not fasting otherwise it's just hangover oh really (laughs) 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 i mean i don't know what hangovers you have i know you don't drink but i don't know what hangovers you have when you don't eat like when i have a hangover all i want to do is eat dominoes no because i've been honking my (laughs) ring up for about 30 (laughs) (laughs) no i can do that easily Eliza, do you drink? Me? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do, but not as not as much anymore. Like, obviously, when I was a lot younger, um, true story, I used to party four days a week when I was in university. Yes. I don't know how I survive. Well, actually, I do. It's called flirting and getting people to buy you drinks. <laughs> 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 oh, the secret's out. Um, but these these days, not not as not as much. And when I do drink, it's it's usually I'll look at the menu and, and you know, select something that I will enjoy. And uh, true story. So last last year when I did travel the world, um, one of the places that I had stayed at was in um, Huntingdon with uh, Will. 
Will and his girlfriend, Alyssa. And I never used to like gin. And then, this is going to sound posh as heck, we went over to Cambridge. (laughs) And um, Alyssa introduced me to some gin over there. And I was like, oh, I think I really like gin now. And so that night I was just drinking gin and it was it was really good. I don't know. It was, so it was is, good. Lots of gins come from Scotland. Gin vegan? Well, that's why I was asking about alcohol, actually. Yeah. Is gin a vegan thing? I know I there are some I think, it's, that... I think it's fine. Like, I think the biggest offenders for being non-vegan are, are, are um, wine and beer. Wine, yeah. wine yeah. and beer because of the, the finings that they use on it. But, like, so yeah. here's the thing where you can drive yourself insane, right? Because sugar is used to make alcohol almost without mm-hmm. exception. Yeah. And actually, if you go really hardcore, a lot of refined white sugar, which is what they use to make alcohol, um, is not vegan because they use bone yeah. sugar to refine sugar. Correct. So, you know, it's, well, uh, that's what I was asking because I know I know people that were like very uh, strong. I'm vegetarian. I'm vegan, but they drink beers and stuff, and I'm like, you can't drink that. I feel like, what do you mean? I can't drink that. And I'm like, they use finings in that. What's yeah. that? Fish girls. Yeah, well, it's yeah. fish girls. Yeah, and fish and it's, it's, Yeah, <laughs> they they put they pour it on top and it sinks down and it takes all yeah. the the loose bits and stuff out the of it. Crap to the bottom. I'm like, oh, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, I didn't I didn't know that. And I'm like, I'm not even vegetarian or vegan, and I know this. Like this, no, like the thing is, but this is, it's, you can't be that radical about it. Otherwise, everybody will just not change. Yeah. Like there'll be no change if everybody thinks they have to be perfect. Like somebody chose to pick a fight with me on Facebook about um, about something. I can't even remember what it was. It's probably like the avocado thing. I probably posted up a picture of <laughs> some food with an avocado. And like, you know, they're murdering all the Guatemalans for avocados. <laughs> and I'm like, fucking hell, man. Do you know what? I'm just trying to do my best. And if everybody just tried to do their best and be a little bit kinder and shop a little bit more ethically, uh, and, and like, you know, I get that not everybody has a lot of money to spend on stuff, right? But I buy clothes maybe once a year. Um, I, you know, I don't use fast fashion. You can fashion. see the shopping containers of clothes that she buys that <laughs> once a year. No, no I don't. I, I buy like a pair of jeans once a year. And they, like, you they call just them beans? Is that vegan jeans? Or did, you just, did I just miss you? Did you no, call them beans? I did not call them beans, no. But I do, I buy, ethical, but I do buy ethical jeans. Um, where I can actually, that's not true because the last pair came from Marks and Spencer's. There was an emergency situation. I won't go. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to now. You can't say I'm not going in there. This is where the podcast <laughs> years off. Really it's, it's not that interesting. So what happened is um, Laura and I were going to meet. Pants. I did not. <laughs> and you know what? That would be more interesting. And I actually wish that was a story, but um, and it wasn't even a piss-related story. Uh, Laura and I were going to. Uh, to meet with a client a new client um and i just i have a standing desk and because i'm just an an obnoxious person i have a tendency to like occasionally put my foot up on a chair or something like that and as i did that like the thigh of my jeans just ripped i had to go to marks and spencers and buy some jeans did you go there with your ripped groin old jeans did yeah i did (laughs) And I was almost escorted out by security. Because they were like, she's too straight edge for us. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've got a half-shaved head, so they just thought I was a hipster. It's all good. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, apparently, jeans with a uh, 90% of them missing cost more money these days. Je- jeans with what? With like 90% of them missing cost more cost more money these oh, days. Oh, yeah, the whole ripped jeans and, yeah. Yeah. And like, the, yeah. 90, like the whole knee much. from the, the mid thigh to the mid shins missing. That's like 400 pounds. <laughs> that's a brilliant. I posted up a brilliant one on uh, on Facebook um, that came up in my Facebook memories the other day. Um, I'll find it for you and tag you in it. But it's basically just like the waistband and the seams down the small <laughs> leg. The like reverse it. slacks. Yeah. I'm just like, holy shit. Like, it's, I don't. Why? Chaps just are coming go back in. Yeah. Like, well, they they never left for some of this, Mark. <laughs> well, that's that's another podcast for the after hours. But I think, for me, I think you're kind of right there, Alison, how you're summarising that. You, you can't do anything 100% that way because you just, you would live in a fear bubble. You wouldn't, you wouldn't come out of that bubble because of... You can't get in the car because it's some sort of plastic that's got fish yeah. in it or it's well, got animals in it. You can't do this, you can't do that. Yeah. The only a Fiat car Panda. Got seats. So Tesla is pretty much Tesla. the only car that's why I'm that has leather seats that are, or pleather seats. 
Like, I bought an electric car, great for the environment, but it's got leather seats. But it's not great for the environment because the batteries are actually trash. This is another anyway. example. Oh, yeah, this and I said 100 mil now like, just run petrol, so it's so. Yeah. But do you know what? Again, it's another example of where people aren't, they, they just don't even want to try because, like, it, it, like I know that the, some of the battery um, production is a dirty process, but actually it's a really small part of the battery and they do recycle the batteries. So, like, it's not really as bad as everybody thinks it is. Is it, it really used to clean? Be worse than that, isn't it, yeah, right? yeah. Like, is it really clean? N no. Is it cleaner than driving around a fuel-based car? Yes. yes. Like, you know, is it? Is, and is any of that? Does any of that stuff compare to having a child? No. The worst carbon footprint <laughs> is having a child. Right. So, like, you you could drive it, and I could drive electric cars for the rest of my life and literally try and leave no carbon footprint and it wouldn't even make up for one child so you know like none of it's perfect it's a zero-sum game though like and the, the ethos that I live by is just to educate myself as much as I can to do as little amount of harm to to others um, you know and I realize I have an iPhone so some poor child had to screw in tiny components for like less than 10 pence a day or whatever but I can't be perfect, but I do the best that I can, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's where we kind of went with Scottish Summit. We can't do as much as we can, but do you know what? If we can get everyone to eat one meal. So there's, I don't know if you've seen it, Alison, there's a documentary that the BBC done recently. It was like a three-parter. I don't watch um, any TV, so no. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm okay. literally so, the worst person, I know that. So like, there's a documentary where they had somebody who was a hardcore vegan activist. Uh -huh. They had somebody who was a vegan cook. And basically they, they tried to educate people in a village on, on how to do it. And I've totally lost why I was going down this route now. It was about people trying but not being perfect. Because you can't, like, the thing is, but, like... I mean, Mark, you can try, but you can't be perfect. You forgot halfway through your story, and that's fine. I, know. <laughs> I was too, too busy trying to remember what it was called there. Always perfect to me. But, like, this is the thing that, like, I, I don't understand. I don't go out of my way to tell people that I'm vegan, right? But invariably, if there's some food involved or something like that, then if it comes up as a subject, you get the really staunch meat eaters that then start going, what about this? You know, what about avocados? Uh, what about, um, it was, there was something else that required bees for cross, I think it was avocados, again, you need bees to cross pollinate the trees, so they're not vegan and stuff. And I'm like, why, just yeah, point some of that at yourself, instead of worrying about me being perfect, why didn't you just try and do a bit better? Do you know what I mean? Why, why is it, I'm not being sanctimonious to anybody, I'm not, you know, judging them for eating their meat and they just it's the needling you know and the reason people do that is because the louise louise freeze said it against a comment she comment she tweeted against um emma darcy's uh post on twitter today about somebody had said something shitty to her about her weight um and louise freeze had put tweeted a reply saying they fight in you what they hate in themselves and that's absolutely true every time someone picks at you for something it's it's zero percent about you and it's a hundred percent about them and that was when I realized that that was the point at which I stopped trying to defend my veganism and I stopped trying to educate other people on veganism because once you see what happens in the in the meat industry and in the dairy industry and you see other people going yeah but bacon you have no idea how much of a psychopath someone like that looks like to someone like me who's seen the films of what happens to those animals and for someone who hasn't bothered to get any education about it to go yeah but bacon's delicious it just makes them look like a psychopath but there is no point in me trying to educate them like they're not ready to receive that information and trying to push something on someone is like jehovah's witnesses well not jehovah's yeah. witnesses but people trying to push their religion on you or uh, you know, if if you're anti-gay, then you're not going to get swayed by a gay bride, pride parade and suddenly go, well, actually, <laughs> do you know what? Men look quite attractive to me now. You know, it just it doesn't work like that. But the game changes was a great thing because it made people look at things from how it affects them because people are only interested in them and what it means to them. Um, and I know that there's some science to prove and disprove absolutely everything. And that's why people are fearful of change, because nobody knows what the real story is. But the only story I can tell you is I feel better for not having dairy and I felt better consciously for not having meat. Um, and that's that's my journey. And that's why I choose to go on. And I find actually that these days, because being 
vegan five years ago was hard. And these days it's so much easier and it's so people talk about it so much more and it's so much more widespread that actually I find the majority of people are interested in it now. Like you guys wanting to do this podcast, you're interested in it um, and interested in knowing like, oh, you know, what changes could I make? And actually, if that's the change that happens as a result of game changes or cowspiracy or anything like that, if people just go plant based 80 percent of the time and then have a burger or bacon or whatever it is that they feel that they have to have at the weekend, or you know, two days a week, then everybody's happier. The planet's happier. There'd be fewer cow deaths, you know. And cow death is a problem. You know, I'm trying to. I've got four stomachs, and I'm trying to make up. But I, you know, I can only replace. <laughs> I can only replace one cow. That's uh, yeah, the best that so I can. So, Alice so in the background was... at the moment is Pulp Fiction, and that is definitely her Ezekiel twenty five seventeen <laughs> speech, isn't it? <laughs> what would Jesus yeah. do? Um, yeah. I yeah, so I remembered where I was I was going with that one. So on the on the BBC program they were talking they were trying to get everyone to sign up for just having one vegan meal, either paired for one vegan meal, vegan for a day, vegan for a week, or vegan for a month. And that's kind of what spurred us on to say, right, let's try and get everyone to have one vegan meal because that that changes it. But that documentary also had the hardcore activist who was outside the slaughterhouses throwing the stuff on to uh, on to stuff and it's like mm, th- there's two sides of things so it's trying to find the best way and it is just educating somebody I think. And like Alice's point people. that she was getting that there as well is more people ask questions about it now five years ago it was a oh my god how did you survive being vegan whereas now it's actually the, t- the song and dance of that question has yeah. changed now it's no actually yeah. how do you do it? Because people aspire to actually eat healthier. They believe it's healthier. They believe that it's not the Smith's meat is murder, but meat is murder in some extent. And there's good things, there's bad things about it. And I'm definitely at that point where I think, well, for my health, I know that it would be better. Yeah. As Alice says, like the type 1, type 2 diabetes, fat around the stomach and all that kind of stuff. There's definitely positives in there for me. I just don't know yeah, how to do think- it. I don't know how to bring my whole family into that. I don't know how to cook in the house more like that. And it's not that... I don't know how to cook in the house. I just have more stuff in the house. Like I have a freezer where I bulk buy meat. It's much easier to bulk buy meat and freeze it and good quality meat and freeze it than it is to buy yeah. vegetables fresh. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I'll go and I'll buy frozen veg and see by the time I cook it, it's just mush. There's absolutely yeah. no palate to it. Yeah. It's horrendous. I won't even put it in soup because I think it's horrendous. I, I don't really like it. So if I'm cooking veg, it has to be fresh. Yeah, but like, see, this is the thing. I don't even have a freezer. Like, why do you need a freezer? Because it's what I've known for years. It's what my mum had. It's exactly that. It's just what you have in your house, right? Do you know what? Like, here's a, here's a story for you as well. And I think part of it is is talking about food as being vegan or plant-based and stuff. And I think that scares people. And this, this is no word of a lie. Years ago, I went to a nutritionist and she said, "Take get rid of dairy. I should, wish I'd listened to her. She said, get rid of the dairy and replace it with, like, rice milk and stuff like that. And I remember buying rice milk and going it's milk from rice that can't be right I'm not happy with that I'm not happy with that shit at all right and I wouldn't and I wouldn't drink it I like tried it and I'm like no it's uh, no I don't like it and I had this and it was all mental right because rice milk is actually fucking delicious it's like it's like really creamy tasting it's like it's one of the nicest things you'd ever drink it looks a bit questionable but it tastes amazing right and now I think it's weird that we would drink cow juice. Like uh, and the fact that I was okay with it, it's just, it's normalization. It's indoctrination. That's yeah. what you're raised on. That's what you know, right? And Who like, was the my... first person that sat down at a cow's tea and had milk? Fuck no. Like, somebody did, did that at some point. Cow? How did they yeah. know, right? Like who was the per- first yeah. person that fucked a monkey and gave everybody AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my yeah. uh, ignorance showing there. It's just and I think people. on please don't on, phone in. It's just for fun. <laughs> and I think on that one, I think that's a good point to wrap up on. <laughs> I was just, I was just going to say one, one thing. Like my dad won't eat something if you tell him it's vegan, right? And my yet, like and yet he actually fifty percent of his diet is vegan. Yeah. See, my like, kids don't know half the time. So if I do a vegetable or, or, or like a cauliflower or broccoli curry. If they don't know now that you're giving them vegetarian or vegan food, you're doing it wrong, Mark, since you've been doing it for months. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe maybe the thing to do then is for me to share some of the stuff that we eat. Um, uh, like the, part of the problem as well is your palate 
changes. Like if, if yeah, I eat now the stuff yeah. that I used to eat before I was vegan, it tastes like shit. But it was what I it's what I used yeah. to enjoy then, right? Um, and like my palate is is completely changed now. So the things that I eat now, I find absolutely delicious. Um, and and I I don't think it works that well if like <laughs> if you're if you're a meat eating family and you suddenly interject. Well, today we're going to have um, Buddha bowls with uh, chopped fresh raw broccoli and quinoa and tempeh, curried tempeh, and yeah. um, and some radish and stuff like that. Like uh, with with and I make this absolutely. It's one of the nicest dressings you'll ever have with tahini and lemon juice and olive oil, and it's like that's one of my favorite things to eat it's absolutely delicious but i'm under no illusions if i serve that up to say you ian you'll probably go this is not doing it for me like it's you might quinoa, everything else i'm up about but the quinoa i'm just like that's unknown food <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't because like in in our house we eat what is it it's a grain right it's, it's a grain. grain yeah it's an ancient grain and it's got a really good protein it's ancient it's only been on the market for the last six months as far as i know <laughs> Well, that's, that's just you, I think. But, uh... Quinoa and kale. <laughs> See, kale nah, actually, again, I, th- I think, delicious. right, to, to kind of summarise where we are for me, and this obviously I came to this looking for an educational piece as well, is to like not sway me 100% to why going this way, but it's the pros and cons of it. And we've been chatting for like an hour, an hour and a half or something at this point, and all I've got is more thirst, more kind of want for knowledge on it than yeah. I had before. I'm kind of excited to go and learn a bit more about it and try and educate myself on it because as much as I eat meat chicken breast is boring it's got no taste to it everybody has chicken breast but it's absolutely no taste to it so why what can I substitute that with I can substitute that with something else of course I can it's just about the protein element at that point like as I mentioned before like going to the gym and doing the stuff I was doing there it was a lot of weight training and and a lot of strength stuff so I was always like oh I need protein but at the same time I can get that protein from other sources. Yeah. I know that. Like, I didn't realize you know these were really high in protein, like, but one of the one of my favorite dishes I've had recently is a, a yellow Thai curry with chick, chickpea and broccoli. Yep. Absolutely love it. Like, it's one of the best things I've eaten. Yeah. I'll send you another recipe for Thai curry that anybody I've sent it to, it, like, it becomes their go-to Thai curry. Uh, it's absolutely delicious. But, like, the, the thing is, if you're going to the gym and you're, and you're wary of not meeting your protein requirement and I promise you if you're eating enough vegetables fresh vegetables you would be hitting your protein requirement but if you're worried about it just have a protein shake when you leave the gym and then just eat plant-based like yeah as you say I don't need to be 100% going to that vegan element but I want a, a vegan protein shake yeah it would be well, nice remember, to have I've it got, yeah I've got the vegan protein shake no you yeah. can get them I've, yeah. I've got protein shakes here and the company that I buy them from they do do vegan various, they do vegan ones, but protein shakes are a bit meh at the same time, right? But yeah, you're they right. are. But like, Two if you scoops, just want to make sure, twenty-five grams for the amount of protein you get in it yeah, with some water, just, it's ridiculous, you can eat, right? You can't you can complain. You exactly. Ah, but that's where you mix it with your milk, so your soya milk. Yeah, no, mix it with water. You can do, no, you mix them with water. It's add. Yeah. Oh, the one I have, I mix with water, and it's like pudding. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah really. It depends on the flavors. Actually, Again, it's down to personal preference, right? Because you is. get people that will mix it with but fruit most, and water or yeah, do different people, stuff. Most people go for chocolate, which is always an error. Chocolate flavored yeah. shakes are never good. Always go vanilla or strawberry. Vanilla. And strawberry cream. Yeah. Here, here's the best evidence that you could ever want. Like, people don't believe that I'm nearly 50 because my skin is good. Right. And I say that's down to being vegan and vegetarian. Some people say it's because I haven't had kids, but like, you know, I think I definitely look a lot younger than my Maybe age. Both of that's down to vegan and vegetarianism, though. Like, Joan. Not having kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, vegan, not getting near her. <laughs> my boyfriend's Before. vegan. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Have you met him? He looks, he looks like Tom Hardy. <laughs> Can't comment, well, not me. I don't know. Well, you know. Before, I would have preferred, we go. Would have preferred Ryan Reynolds, but yeah. yes, Eliza. Before before we go, because I actually do have to go and start work in a few minutes. I do want to say I really respect Mark for his choices because, I mean, as we saw with um, the documentary on on Netflix, Game Changers, it's not really embraced for males to go vegan and I I don't know why and so usually when males do go vegan 
people tend to get a bit shocked because they associate males with, you know, muscles and, and meat and stuff. So, you know, I really think it's awesome that Mike has decided to try the plant pace journey. And I respect any males that go through it. And one of the males that actually influenced me into becoming vegan is a YouTuber called um, Simnet Nutrition. So his name is Derek Simnet. He's based out in Vancouver Island. He's on YouTube. Go look him up. Yes, he's he amazing. is actually, yeah, he's actually, um, you know, he is a trained and certified nutritionist and he's vegan. And so, Ian, if you watch his YouTube series, you'll see that he's still doing well in terms of being, you know, a good athlete or a fitness guru because he embodies everything that you think a vegan can't do. And so, for me, I'm always like, it's always cool whenever I meet males who are vegan because they've been like, you know what, I don't care what people think. I don't care if people think less of me because I've gone vegan. And so, it shocks me to yeah, that's all I wanted to, to say. It shocks me to hear that that you've experienced that. And that's something that, that we could totally talk, talk about on our podcast as well, that there is that stigma still attached to it being a male-female thing. That's something that I hadn't even considered. So it's quite shocking to hear that, as I say, but... Props to that, actually, Mark, if that is the case, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, so what we're going to do, Ian, is you're going to commit to trying it for, for a day then? I'd do longer than a day. That's not that's not a challenge. I, th- I think the best thing you can do for yourself is to change your palate. Like, if you can do yeah. enough to change your palate so that you, you actually start to eat differently, then that's, I don't think that's I the would... biggest change. I know, I know, Eliza, you're, you're going to go, Eliza, and, and that's this is we need to kind of wrap up at that point. So definitely, thank you for coming along. But on the kind of meat thing, I wouldn't miss it. Every meal that I have has veg and lots of veg in it. I purposely put lots of veg in it as a, that, but it's just swapping that meat bit out and knowing what else I can put in it, and that's where I struggle. More veg. Just put more veg in it. Yeah. And on that note. I will obviously you. buy more veg then, right? <laughs> cool. Thank, Thank you very, you very much, much for time, Eliza. Enjoy your working day. It's the night for us, and you have woke up super early to join this podcast. So actually, props to you for doing that, and hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've had a blast, and uh, it'll keep you going during the day. Thank you.